Hi there, this is Helen Taran again from Helen. Welcome to another episode of Commercial Property Roadshow. You're here with Helen Tarrant. And today I'm actually going to talk about something that may be actually quite, uh, I think for most people, they think it's quite a given thing, right? So I'm going to talk about goal setting for your commercial property purchase. I haven't talked about it before. I don't talk much about mindset. I don't talk much about uh, in terms of setting your goals to do with a lot of that in terms of commercial property. I talk about criteria. I talk about returns on investment. I talk about cash flow, growth, different strategies. But today I'm going to talk about something different. And the reason why I want to talk about goal setting in commercial property is that I meet a lot of new clients that start out and they have a very different idea to where their portfolio should be. And I realized we actually have to strip back everything to the beginning and we actually have to talk about goal setting and not, in fact, there's nothing out there that people talk about goal setting commercial property because if you don't know, you don't know. And why should you be talking about goal setting, right? What kind of goals am I trying to achieve? Am I trying to achieve 50,000? Am I trying to achieve 100,000? If I don't know, how can I set my goals, right? So what... I constantly hear from from our clients is oh I want that growth and I want because they come from a residential background and I want that growth in commercial and I want the cash flow but I also want the opportunity in the future where I could develop something do something create the uplift because I watched your videos and I'm trying to blend three strategies into one well this is why we have this video this is why we're going to talk about goal setting now goal setting I want you to consider three things three things for goal setting number one what is it that you are truly wanting to achieve with your commercial or just property portfolio, not even commercial, property portfolio, number one, right? And the reason I want to ask this question is because is it's all about the future. So if you're doing goal setting, you want to talk about the future and you want to talk about, okay, do I want to be able to retire on three good properties or five good properties? Or it doesn't matter how many properties, but I want 100 grand or 200 grand or I need 400 grand to replace my income. So now um, I have my first goal. My first big goal is, and it's about when you set goals, they need to be big, right? Uh, so I've got clients who go, oh, I want to set a hundred grand. Uh, and they could literally, they have enough equity in their in their portfolios, they could literally replace 200, 500 grand within a 12 month period, right? But they don't realize that. So really to have that picture, I want to have three properties that I really, really want that in the future. or And that can be because I've got three kids and I need to give each one of them a commercial property property when I pass on um, or if you're residential that's fine three residential properties you know I want to make sure that each of the kids have 20 40 50 thousand dollars or I need a hundred like one of our clients which um, her goal was I want to be able to have enough money to take to send my kids to private school and each of them are going to be costing me somewhere around 30 to 40 thousand dollars a year so I need a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in income I don't know how many properties I'm going to need to achieve that, but I'm literally 120,000 is what I'm after, right? So that's a good goal setting. So number one, goal setting income or property that you want to own in the long term. It doesn't matter if it's three, five or 10 years, right? So that's number one. Number two, to make it realistic, you have to have a timeline, right? And now we talk about, do you want to do it in five years? Do you want to do it in 10? Do you want to do it in 15? And look, that most people will start out and it's going to be unrealistic, right? You're going to go, I want to do it for three years, four years, um, or I want to do it in as soon as possible in the next 12 months. Yeah, you can do it in the next 12 months, but it depends on if you actually have enough of actual equity or deposit for you to do it. If you don't, then it's don't set an impossible goal for your brain not to comprehend because if your brain can't comprehend it, you are not going to get there. It's just going to dismiss it and 12 months later, you're still where you are. 
right? Have something realistic. If you think, okay, I am going to want to achieve a hundred grand passive income in five years, potentially add another two, right? So then you'll think, okay, look, I've got plenty of time to achieve it, right? So I want you to think about that. Now, if you are 55 now, you might want to retire at, at 60. And so if in the next five years you can replace 100 grand, then you've at least go, okay, I've got that timeline. Well, maybe I need seven years. If you're 30 and you want to retire soon, maybe that goal needs to be 10 years to, you know, 200 grand or something like that, right? Work out, you know, that 120 grand. Like say again, for this client of mine, she her kids were uh, only under five. So she knows that to get them to when they get to high school, she's got about seven years or so for their getting to high school. So around the age of uh, 11, 12 is when they go to high school. So the, the elders, it's just shy of five. So she realized in seven years, they're going to be 12 going to high school. So seven years is the goal she set. So 120,000 and seven years is the goal, right? And that's good. It covers up the first two criteria. And then number three, number three criteria it's, it can vary over time, but number three is it's how much am I happy with with my first property deal? So it would be different for everyone, right? And this is where things start to change. Because why I asked about that is most people set their goals so high they can't attain it in the amount of time they want and they can't get to their cash flow and they give up. So... This is where number three comes in, is where we now break it down into bite-sized pieces. So how much are you happy with with your first deal? So would that be 10,000, 20,000? Because you're not going to get 100 grand in your first deal unless you're going to be buying a two or two and a half, maybe three million dollar property, right? So for most people, that's not achievable. They might be buying their first property between, you know, anywhere from 800 to 1.2. So somewhere anywhere from $20,000 to $40,000 is achievable. So I want to ask yourself, what is the first cash flow, how much cash flow do you want to do in your first deal? And make it as realistic as anything that you can accept to yourself, right? And you know, if at the end of the day, that is a hundred grand, you want to do that in your first deal. But if you do that, you might be, you know, earning 500 grand at the moment. But if you're earning a hundred grand right now, and you say, look, my first deal, I'll be happy with 20 grand, then what you are doing to your brain and what you're doing to yourself is you actually bring it down to reality. I'm going to now try to achieve my 100 grand in bite-sized pieces. And if I attain $20,000, I'll give myself a pat on the back. I'll be really, really happy with that. And then that will incentivize me to go and do more and do more. And I know that this strategy is working. So you need a marker to make sure or a checkpoint to make sure your strategy is working. So find out what you'll be happy with with the first deal. How much am I able to close with my first deal? If I'm able to close $20,000 after the deal of cash flow every year, I'll be really, really happy. So that is your message. That's your top three goals. That's setting the goals for commercial property. And that actually sets you on a really good pathway, right? So number one, we talk about a cash flow goal. Number two, we talk about a time timing right in years number three we talk about your first commercial property cash flow how much that is right now you've got a bit of a plan in place right so now you've got commercial property goals and you're starting of a plan and that is a good trajectory to catapult you to the next lot of questions or the next tier of being able to make decisions and also a planning for commercial property for your first commercial property or second or fifth one right so now you've got the three the next little bits that we do a lot and we do a lot of this in the strategy session we have with our clients but you can do this on your own as well and that is actually then start to ask yourself the question okay so how much equity or how much cash or deposit do i actually have right and this is a a again a big high level picture so this is not about uh, how much i want to use my first deal so it's not about you know i want to use 200 grand or 150 or 500 thousand it's about how much deposit or equity or cash flow do i or, or, or deposit do i have now right if i moved everything in my path right my super 
um, my cash, my shares, my crypto, uh, my residential equity, if I decide to sell, how much would I get? If I refinance, how much do I get? Anybody I can borrow, you know, for my family, how much can I get? And you just basically try to collate a pile of cash, right, in your head, not not like going physically get it, but a pile of cash in your head to say, all right, so I want to achieve these three goals, right? I want to achieve these three goals. Now I'm going to go accumulate and see how much cash I've got, right? It doesn't matter if those cash is not enough. It's just you've got to know your position. And most people don't. They kind of go, oh, I have this, 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 and it's all floating my 10 properties. And then I've got 50K in cash. And then I've got 20K in shares. And then my boat might be worth another 30,000. You know, or, you know, my, my timeshare, all of that stuff. But I want you to collate that in cold hard cash, what that is, right? And you work it out. You go, okay. Now, I might have 500k, or I might have a mil, and sometimes for some of you, it's 10 mil, some of you, it's 2 mil, right? Okay, I have, you know, 500k, or I have 700k, this is what I have. Now, then you sit through that, and you go, okay, this is what I have, and then you work out how much am I ha happy to risk, or use, or invest, right? Because all investments come with risk for my first deal. And that might be half of it, or that might be a third of it, or it might be all of it, right? Depending on how much you want to leverage. And that gets you into a good set of understanding. All right, I'm going to willing to, I've got this much. This is how much I'm willing to spend. And now my next thing is to actually then work out what my first commercial property or the, my next commercial property deal is going to look like, right? So number one is going to be, um, you know how much you want to earn, as in, the, you know, you, we come back to that goal, how much you want to earn, right, from that pile of uh, planning and goals, we talked about your long-term cash flow, we talked about the years, and we talked about uh, what you want in your first deal. Now you worked out your pile of cash and how much deposit you want to use for your first one. So now you've got your first one, how much deposit, and then you've got how much cash flow. And you're going to see if these two matches up. If it matches up, then ding in your head and your brain, you go, all of a sudden, we've got a strategy, right? If it mismatches, you'll have to go back and, and readjust that, right? You might go, okay, I'm happy with a little less cash flow or a little more cash flow, or I'm happy to spend a little bit more deposit, a little less deposit. And really to get that match, come and talk to us. We can set up the strategy for you, work out how that's going to work. Or you can go out and do some research by looking at properties online to see, you know, for the purchase price based on your deposit, you know, after speaking to maybe a finance broker, if that's going to get you there, right? But come to speak to us and we can plan that all out for you. But then when you get this match, that's where things become real, right? Things become real because all of a sudden now you know, deposit, how much I can, how much passive income I can clear. Now I've got a concrete pathway. Now I'm putting my goals into action, right? So on that note, if you want someone to help you do that, if you want us to actually plan out and map out your journey, reach out to us, helentarrant.com or unicorn.com.au and let us become your partners in your commercial property journey. Bye for now and I'll see you in the next video.